Hi, my name is Jabari Greer, and tonight I not only want to talk about how to tie a Windsor knot, but also the history of the Windsor knot and some of the, the modern applications of, of the Windsor knot. Now, when you first saw me as an audience, what are some of the things that you were thinking? You know, usually you see a man in a shirt and tie, you think that he's dressed nice or he's dressed as if he's going to conduct business. Now, I did this to make a strong point. Um, a well tied and pronounced tie can definitely influence the way your audience perceives you and not only that it can give the individual self-confidence and self-esteem going back the history of the Windsor not although it's named after King Edward the Duke of Windsor King Edward the eighth it's widely believed to be discovered by his father George the fifth he preferred a wide knot and actually had all of his ties specially made with a thicker fabric so he could achieve the wider knot that the Windsor had. So not only did King Edward VIII um, take his father's throne, but he took his tie too. I thought, I thought that was funny. Um, the modern application of the Windsor knot, nowadays it's thought to be the tie of the gentleman. Not only the gentleman, but the businessman. Men from President Obama to James Bond wear the Windsor knot. So uh, nowadays, if you see me in the Windsor knot, you not only think that he's sharp, he's a gentleman, but that he's going to conduct business. And I believe that it's more acceptable business attire because of the thicker, symmetrical knot that it has. It's much more thicker than, um, uh, than the Kent knot, which is the simple knot. It's a smaller knot. Um, in 85 Ways to Tie a Tie by Thomas Fink and Young Mao, it describes six different sequences in which all ties can be tied. Now you can think of any tie that you're trying to tie and it gives you six different ways to actually tie this tie. And all diagrams are shown as, as a tie would appear in the mirror. So they have different tying uh, diagrams. They have L for left, R for right, and C center and also they have I O and T I is into the diagram O is outside the diagram and T is through the loop now the diagram is actually the center of the tie so you can go left into the diagram right out, outside the diagram and through the loop so all ties can be tied using these sequences Let's start with this one. How do we actually tie the Windsor tie, the Windsor knot? So you first must start with the tie in both hands. This is the wide side. This is the narrow. This is the, the base and the front. All right, so the sequence calls first LI, which is left into the diagram, left into the diagram. So now the diagram is this the center, the center spot right here. The second one calls for center outside the diagram. So it's center, center, outside the diagram and actually it's going to wrap around your thumb right in the back okay so now your thumb is in there and now the second calls for right into the diagram so you're going to swing it right into the diagram okay so the second one calls for left outside the diagram so you're going to put it in the loop and swing it back out so you now have a loop along the line here and a loop along the line here and now this one calls for center into the diagram two fingers up across two fingers next one called right outside the diagram so it's going to go up under to the top 
and this one is through the loop. So not a, so when you put it through the loop, you straighten it out, and you have basically the the, the winds are not, but you don't stop there. This is a trick that I've heard. You pull the base so it gets a wider, thicker, and more pronounced tie. Straighten your collar. Pull it up. Fix your collar. This is usually the part that takes the most work. You gotta fix your collar and make sure that you get nice, clean lines. You see my collar is symmetrical, stick, pronounced, ready for business. So in conclusion, we not only talked about the history of the Windsor and that dashly King Edward the Eighth, but we also talked about the modern uses and how it's a knot of gentlemen and professionals. Um, but the sequence for Windsor, and that's something that if you use that, use the, these certain sequences, you can actually use that with any type of tie. You can use that for the foreign hand knot, for the Pratt knot. You can use that for the half Windsor and also the Kent knot, which we, we discussed earlier. So, but the thing that I love about the, the Windsor and also tying ties in general is that the individual knot changes for the individual person. If you don't like the knot this thick, you can make it thinner. If you don't like it this wide, you don't have to do the last um, thing that we did on there. So one thing that I have learned that um, aim that I have is that um, one knot isn't for everybody. You know, the Windsor is for me, and I hope it's for you. Thank you.